Next, let us take a look at the concept of class and object. Now, if you have done any kind of programming, like Fortran or COBOL, and you are given a problem like calculate the total pay of an employee by adding their salary and bonus, how would you go about doing it? So we will have something like this. So given a situation where we have the employee salary and bonus, we would like add up the salary and bonus and then print the total pay. Or if you have done some COBOL or Fortran, we may call a method or a subroutine here. So here if you notice, we are taking the input of salary and bonus and then we are calling some kind of a function or subroutine to calculate total pay and then this function will calculate the total pay and then we will print the total pay. So this used to be the old way of writing programs. A kind of a top-down approach. The program starts at the beginning here and then it ends here and then you run this program again and again for various employees like for an employee like Alex we will take a salary and bonus we will call this function which will calculate the total pay and then we will print the total pay for Alex for Linda we will run this program again we will get the salary bonus and then we will call a function to calculate the sum of salary and bonus and we will print the total pay but in object oriented programming the same program of calculating total pay is written in a different manner in object oriented programming there is first something called as a class now don't worry about what a class is now this class will have those two data that is salary and bonus and then it will have this function or what they call a method which will calculate the total pay by adding the salary and bonus so here you can see that what happens is there's a class called employee which has like two data that is like salary and bonus and then it has like a kind of a method which will add up the salary and bonus and print the total pay now in some other place we will have some kind of a main method where we will create employees like this like employee Alex, Linda, John. Now if you remember this syntax is very similar to this like integer x comma y comma z. Like we have integer x comma y comma z we will have employee Alex comma Linda comma John. Now if you remember when you say integer x comma y comma z that means x can hold an integer, y can hold an integer and z can hold an integer. That is you can assign some integer to x, you can assign some integer to y. Same way, when you look at this, when you say employee Alex, comma, Linda, comma, John, that means Alex can hold an employee, Linda can hold an employee, and John can hold an employee. Just like x can hold an integer and y can hold an integer. So what does it mean by holding an employee? Now, when you say int x, that means x can hold an integer and when you say employee Alex that means Alex can hold an employee that means Alex will have his own salary will have his own bonus and will have his own calculate total pay that means you can say Alex dot since employee has a salary Alex will also have a salary dot salary equal to say 90,000 Alex dot since employee has a bonus, I will Alex will also have a bonus, 20,000. And since employee has a method called calculate total pay, Alex will have Alex will have a calculate total pay method. So what happens now is when Alex calls this calculate total pay method, it will call this method called calculate total pay and it will add up the salary and bonus. But whose salary and bonus will it add? Since Alex is the person who calls this particular method, it will add up Alex's salary and bonus, that is ninety and twenty thousand dollars, and it will print out over here hundred and ten thousand. Same way for Linda, Linda will have her own employee, that is, Linda is a type of employee, so Linda will have access to her own salary, her own bonus, and she can call her own calculate total pay, that is, Linda dot salary and Linda can call her own calculate total pay. So over here, when Linda calls calculate total pay, what happens is it will come here, 
and it will add up salary and bonus. Whose salary and bonus? Since Linda is the person who called this method, it will add up Linda's salary and bonus and it will print out $120,000. This Alex, Linda and John are what you call objects. This Alex, Linda and John are what you call objects. So what is an object? So an object can be defined as a copy of a class. So if you notice, Alex is nothing but it has, a, it has a copy of the class employee. Because employee has salary and employee has bonus, Alex will also have a salary, also will have a bonus and Alex will have its own copy of calculate total pay method. Since Linda is a type of employee, that means Linda has a copy of employee. That means Linda will have her own salary, her own bonus and her own calculate total pay method. So an object can be defined as copy of a class and some people even call it instance of a class. So if that is the case, what is a class? A class is a template for an object. A template, the meaning of template, if you remember like if you use MS Word document, you can create new documents from like templates, existing templates. And then you can type in your own letter. So same way, this is nothing but a template. You create copies of this class employee and then you assign your own data for each and every object. So a class is nothing but a template for an object. Now what does a class usually contain? This is called data. This double salary and double bonus is called data. And this is called a method. So a class usually contains like data and methods. It will have multiple data and multiple methods. So a class contains data and methods. Now let us look at another example. This time I will have a class called box, which will have like two data length and width and which will have a method so if you look at this class box it has two data length and width and it has one method called calculate area which basically multiplies the length and width and it prints out that particular area so to make use of this class i will create objects of this class so here i have created two objects of this box class that is ups and fedex and since UPS is a type of box, UPS will have its own length and width and FedEx will have its own length and width and UPS will have its own calculate area and FedEx will have its own calculate area. So here you can see that UPS, since it is a type of box, UPS will have a length and I'm assigning 10 and UPS will have its width assigned as 5 and when UPS calls calculate area, it will multiply the length and width and it will print the area. But whose length and width will it call? Since UPS is the one which called this method, it will use UPS's length and UPS's width and it will print out 50. The same thing when FedEx calls calculate area, it will use FedEx's length and width and it will print out the area. So this UPS and FedEx are called objects. So what are objects? Objects are nothing but copies of this class. Each and every object has a fresh copy of this class. It has a fresh length, fresh width, and a fresh calculate area method. And the class has data and methods, and it is a template for objects. So let us try out the two examples that we saw. That is the employee class and the box class. Now let us create a package called day two dot class and object. And in this, let us create a new class called employee. You need not check this public static void method. So in this class employee, we are going to have like a salary bonus and a calculate total pay method. So now if you see, I have this class called employee with salary and bonus. And then I have this method called calculate total pay, which adds up the salary and bonus and prints out total pay equal to the total pay. It is giving me some kind of an error. Now, to remove this particular error, you have to put this void in front of this method. Now, you may be asking me, what is this void? We will learn more about this void and return type later on. But for now, remember, 
this particular method is printing out something right here it is not returning this any value this method is not returning any value so void means that this method is not sending any value anywhere else it is just printing it out right here of course you will see more uses of void later on let us save this class and let us create another class in the same package and we'll call this like test employee and here let us select public static void main in this main method we are going to create objects of employee now to create objects of employee you can either do something like this so to create objects of employee you can either do something like this employee alex linda john and then we can initialize each and every object this is a requirement you have to do this or you can say employee alex equal to new employee so this new employee is required you are initializing the object so once you have created this employee objects alex linda and john you can assign the salary and bonus for each and every object and call the calculate total pay you can say alex dot and here you will immediately see salary bonus so that means this alex object as a copy of salary a fresh copy of salary that you can assign alex dot bonus equal to alex dot calculate total pay so when you say alex dot these things must come now when you run this save it and run this particular main method right click run as java application you will see that the total pay of 110,000 is printed same thing goes for linda so linda has her own salary her own bonus and linda can call her own calculate total pay and when you save and run it you will get this linda's total pay printed right here so let us try out the other example the box class and create box objects i am going to right click on this package new class so in this box class i have like a length width and a calculate area method which basically multiplies the length and width and then prints out area equal to area and to test this box class i'm going to create a test box class with the public static void main method i'm creating two objects of box ups and fedex and i'm going to assign the length width and i'm going to call the calculate area method so when you run this box class this main method in the box class right click run as in java application you will see that the area is 50 for this ups and area is 42 for this fedex now a few conventions while creating classes class name should always start with a capital letter now these are conventions not a rule it will work even if you have a lowercase e here but then follow the convention so that your code looks neat for data, data always starts with a lowercase. Now, if you have two words like salary of employee, that means the next word will start with the capital letter. So you can have data like this, salary employee or something like that. Then the next word will start with a capital letter. But if you have only one word, it's all lowercase. Same thing goes with the method name. You start with the lowercase, but the subsequent words you will have capital letters like calculate total pay t and p are capital so here also if you notice the double total pay the t is small letter but the pay, p is capital letter also if you have like lots of classes opened here and you feel like you know i want to close the others you can just right click on the class and say close others so you'll have only one class open at a 